Over 2,000 years ago, two disillusioned disciples walked along a dusty road to Emmaus. They had just witnessed Jesus, their friend and leader, whom they hoped to be the Messiah, suffer a gruesome death by crucifixion. Doubt, fear, and uncertainty clouded their conversation as they journeyed home, questioning the future. Until something miraculous happened. The risen Jesus appeared and answered their questions. Today, many young Catholics step onto college campuses with numerous questions about their faith, yearning to know if the seed of faith given to them as a child is both true and practical. Using the miracle on the road to Emmaus as a model, young adult ministers conversed weekly for three months with college students about the most pressing questions they had about the Catholic faith. As they journeyed together virtually, something amazing happened. Doubts disappeared, fears faded, and Jesus revealed that he is still alive. Hearts Burning Within Us, the latest book from Patchwork Heart Ministry, scheduled to be released in the summer of 2021, is a result of that grace-infused conversation. To pre-order your copy and help spread the word about the book, visit patchworkheart.org. Welcome to the Sowing Hope Podcast. This is a show all about implanting hope in our hearts. I'm Bill Snyder, joined by my friend Ann DeSantis. We're glad you're here for our uplifting conversation about faith and how it sustains our hearts through all the seasons of life. Thanks for walking with us. And good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Sewing Hope Podcast. I am Bill Snyder. It's wonderful to be with you this evening, and thank you so much for tuning in to Sewing Hope and listening to Patchwork Heart Radio. I also want to give a quick shout out and reminder to each and every one of you listening right now that you can get a free ebook of the Contemplative Stations of the Cross until midnight tonight, Pacific Time. So that's the California West Coast time. Uh, those of you looking to get a free ebook on Amazon Kindle, it's the Stations of the Cross that I authored. Uh, it is available on the Kindle uh, tonight uh, until midnight tonight. Um, so head over to Amazon and get your free copy before the promotion runs out. But uh, before uh, too long, I don't want to wait too long to bring on my co-host Anne DeSantis. Anne, how are you this evening? Oh, great, Bill. Good to be here, as always. <laughs> yes, it's great. Um, and so, folks, um, when we, and we have one another wonderful show, uh, another wonderful guest, Anne, right? So tell us a little bit about uh, our wonderful guest that we have tonight. Yes, we really do have an amazing guest. Her name is Maria Shepard. I would love to read her bio to all of you. De- debut author Mar- Maria Shepard hails from Commercial Point, Ohio. She graduated from Ohio Christian University in 2018 with her BA in Interdisciplinary Studies, minors in Psychology and Biblical Studies, and an AA in Business Management. She comes from a musical family and has performed at Carnegie Hall, the White House, and the Vatican. 
Creative writing has been part of her life since before grade school, and her family has saved every poem, short story, greeting card, and comic she's ever written. She's currently taking training to become a financial coach and desires to teach others how to become debt-free, build wealth, and begin living the lives they dream. Thank you so much for joining us, Maria. Hi, Bill and Ann. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. It's great you're on tonight. Yes. Can you hear me okay? Yes. We sure can. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. So you, we, you have such wonderful experience in life. Please tell us about yourself and your faith journey. Ah, uh, my faith journey. My faith journey began when I was very young. I'm a cradle Catholic, born and raised. Ever since I was a little girl, my parents taught me all the basic prayers. We would end every night with the Our Father, the Hail Mary, and the Glory Be. And as we got older, I started reading at a very young age. But as I got older, we would read uh, bedtime stories every single night. Um, one of my favorite books that we read from was a Precious Moments book. And it was a compilation of bedtime stories. And they would teach all the virtues in these very kid-friendly uh, stories. They would have stories about the virtue of telling the truth. And they would have stories about, oh, this kid who would pretend being sick by putting flour on his face. And like one that teaches the virtue of humility by this one girl who has a beautiful singing voice and tries to win a competition. Um, I loved those stories very much. And my parents taught me CCD um, very young as well. And I grew up learning about the different sacraments and I got really excited about it. Um, so yeah, I've been Catholic my entire life. I remember hitting a rough point around the time I was in fifth grade, I started noticing I had some procrastination issues and I was very, very prideful. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell my parents, you know, what my grades were. Um, or anything like that. And I would all keep it to myself because, you know, I wanted to do this on my own. I wanted to be, you know, big, big accomplisher. And um, it just got really worse through middle school. And my freshman year of high school was when I finally said, you know, God, this is something that, you know, you're going to have to take away from me. I want you in control, not me. And I've started praying every single night since. And it isn't just the, you know, the basic prayers, the Our Father, the Hail Mary, and Glory Be. I like having a conversation with God. It's like, God, this is how my day has gone. This is what I thought went really well. And this is what I thought, you know, I could use some improvements on. And I've been doing really great ever since. I'm listening to the Bible in a Year podcast now with Father Mike. Um, we've been watching, or not watching, but listening to DVDs. Or CDs rather, I'm mixing up, <laughs> I'm mixing up DVDs and CDs. Um, in the car on trips, we would listen to um, Chris Stefanik and Matthew Kelly and Patrick Madrid and all these really, you know, Catholic, really Catholic speakers. And it's really interesting to hear from their point of view because, you know, their stories are so rich and their perspectives are wonderful. And so that's my Catholic journey so far. And I continue to learn every day. Yeah, incredible. I love your faith journey. And you're doing so much because not only are you involved in writing, and I know we're going to talk a lot about that, but also in the finance world. So yes, yes. yes. and um, so going to our next question here, how did you get involved with your work or and or ministry? Oh, okay. Well, from for writing, I'll talk about money here in a bit. But from a writing standpoint, I got started when I was Let's see, I learned how to, my mom said I learned how to read when I was like three or four. She homeschooled us, so we were very much into books. Mm. Um, so that's when I started writing. I got my inspiration from like Brown Bear, Brown Bear, What Do You See? And Does a Kangaroo Have a Mother Too? And like I fell in love with verse. And I started writing books when I was about five, I want to say. My first book was called The Cat and the Dog, and it was based off of my then childhood dog, Toby, who's a Pomeranian, and my neighbor's, do uh, my neighbor's cat, Chelsea, and it was their stories, their adventures, like, oh, the dog has to go outside now, and now they're having a party, and I wrote um, a Mia series, is what I called it, because Mia was my nickname growing up, and it still is, so I created this character called Mia, and her adventures with her friend Fred, her older sister Katrina, and her niece Mary, and their adventures. So I started kind of writing that way. And then I got inspired by uh, Beverly Cleary was one of my favorite authors uh, growing up. The Ramona series was one of my favorites. Hmm. Um, 
I think that was actually required book reading, but I fell in love with the author through that. So thankfully, uh, I learned more about, you know, writing from, you know, a child's perspective and, oh, it's really wonderful how they can reach out and write a story this way. So I started fusing the two together. I would say, hmm, what if I could reach out to a child the way Beverly Cleary does, but also use my gift of verse? And that kind of fused together. And that's how Wendy's Wacky Wardrobe, my book, came about. And then from a money standpoint, um, I started getting interested in financial coaching about 12 years ago. Um, I did this program. I helped facilitate at a middle school I lived nearby called um, Real Money, Real World was the name of the simulation. And it taught middle schoolers how to manage money. And it gave like different booths that you could go to, like um, housing and utilities and cars and, and entertainment and clothes and things like that. And it was really fun teaching these kids how to budget. It's like, oh, maybe you don't use a credit card for this because interest, or this is how you pay off a student loan faster. And I knew that I wanted to be a coach my entire life. My mom is a coach and I learned mostly from her and I really liked what she was doing. And I was like, I'm going to fuse the two together. And so that's how I got started in the finance world. Mm. Fascinating stuff. <laughs> really fascinating. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and, uh, just, you have a wonderful, um, you have a wonderful little journey of, of faith and you have a great mission, you know, your mission, uh, you know, really to, to help people uh, be both uh, fi financially strong and sound. And then you've also got uh, this, this wonderful uh, thing about, um, you know, making sure uh, people are, are raised with co good core values. And, um, yeah. and, and that is uh, such a wonderful, wonderful, uh, you know, thing. And I know we've talked to um, a few other people from uh, Perpetual Light, and it, it, it's just an amazing organization, uh, you know, which is uh, where the books, uh, Wendy, Wendy's Wacky Wardrobe is, is published through. But I would love for you to tell us a little bit more about, um, you know, just the, just the concept of, of, you know, Wendy's Wacky Wardrobe and, you know, kind of kind of the, that, that whole, um, you know, idea. Okay. So it's a really funny story. This happened, I want to say October of 2019, I was up in my room and I got really, really bored and I knew I wanted to write something, but I didn't know what I wanted to write about. I try to make writing, you know, a daily part of my life to kind of keep my mess, my muscle, um, in shape. Uh, so I looked around my room and I'm like, what can I write about? And I am notorious in my family for having a very messy room. And I kind of have, you know, like clothes strewn across <laughs> the room. So I'm looking at these clothes with all the different patterns. And I'm like, okay, I can write about the stripes and the polka dots and the, and the jeans and the jackets. And I'm like, you know what? Some of this stuff actually rhymes. So I start writing about everything I see in my room. And I'm like, what if I wrote the story based on a little girl who is essentially me, who accumulates all these clothes, has a wacky sense of fashion, which I actually did when I was a kid. Um, growing up in the early thousands, you know, I had a lot of mismatching uh, flower prints and you know, <laughs> bright colors. And for a while I went by the nickname Purple Grape because a lot of my outfits were purple. Um, so very wacky sense of fashion in a very messy room. So I'm like, okay, Wendy's wacky wardrobe. I like the alliteration, let's roll with it. Um, it didn't come until the end of the story where I'm like, how do I want to wrap this up? And then I was like, you know what, let's put in a few virtues as well, because that's what I want kids to learn from my writing is that it's fun, it's creative, it's quirky, but it also teaches a good life lesson. And that what, that's what makes the parents feel good as well. So I started going, hmm, now what's the main issue in the book that needs to be resolved? Well, she needs to get rid of the stuff that she's accumulated, but she also needs to keep her sense of fashion. So she ends up giving most of it away um, because she doesn't use it anymore. So it's the gift of, you know, giving of you know, oneself and what one has. And then um, also of temperance. Um, she's a shopaholic. So she learns to bring a friend with her so that she can stop. <laughs> that's, yeah. you know, that's awesome. It really is. I, I love it. And I think, I don't know your age, but I have two daughters in their uh, early 20s. My daughter Elaine is 24 and my daughter Sean is 22. 
And, you, you know, uh, the books that you're describing and what you, you know, everything that you're talking about, about like the way that you were raised and everything, it really reminds me of that same time period of when my daughters were, uh, you know, going through school and, and now my youngest daughter just finished college. So. Wow, that's wonderful. Congratulations. Yeah, absolutely. So what do you like best about what you do? What I like best about writing is that I get to share my unique perspective. A lot of what I've written is from my own life stories, but I get to write in a way that reaches other people, that gets to speak to whatever audience I choose. And what's great about writing is that there are no, you know, guidelines or boundaries. I can write whatever's on my mind. And if I don't want anybody to see it, that's okay too. And I can try and try again. I am notorious for being a perfectionist. So I want to make sure that everything that I write is, you know, high quality, but also that is good for the parents and the kids that I'm targeting. Um, but what I love most about writing is just being able to use the gifts that God has given me and express myself and also get to touch someone's life in that way. And then what I like most about doing in the financial world, as far as coaching somebody goes, I really enjoy giving people those aha moments where they're like, oh, I've never thought of doing a budget that way. Or, oh, I never thought if I invest this much a month, then I can actually pay for this within X amount of time. And it's really, really great watching them light up because everybody's so concerned about their financial situation these days and the pandemic certainly isn't helping. Um, but it's really, really wonderful to inject hope and that's what I hope to do with my writing and with my financial training. Yeah, that's one. I like the word inject hope because, you know, hope is a very important aspect of life. And that's why we named this podcast <laughs> Sewing Hope. Actually, I should say Bill yeah. named it. He did a great job. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you so much. So how can people get in touch with you if they're interested in your work in any way, shape or form? <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, I initially started my writing project on Facebook. So if you go to Maria Shepard author page, that is how you can keep up to date with all my new project, my current works, and everything new that's going on there. And as far as if you want to reach out to me for financial coaching, the email for that is moneywithmaria at gmail.com. And you can see you no know, schedule a free consultation there. Yeah, very, very good. Because, you know, you made a good point that we're in a time right now where people might have had financial issues before this, but hmm, I think they're a lot worse right now after what some people have gone through with something like job losses and, and other issues, right? Yes, the economy definitely took a big hit during the pandemic. And I absolutely feel for these people, especially if they may have lost their businesses or if they were laid off and I think now more than ever, people are in need of some financial advice. And I hope that they turn to me to be able to provide that for them because I do want to inject them with hope. And another thing that I want to add is if you want to buy the book, Wendy's Wacky Wardrobe, I'm going back and forth between being an author and being a financial coach. But if you were interested in buying those works, they are available on the Perpetual Light Publishing website and also on Amazon. Very, very good to know. Uh, so what's going on with you in this year of 2021 and beyond? Well, I just finished a training session called Financial Coach Master Training. I've gotten very involved with the Dave Ramsey model. And so now I'm actually a certified financial coach. And I finished my training about a week ago. So I'm, you know, fresh off the plate. I'm looking for clients. I'm very excited about that, the potential of building my business. And I also have a nephew who is due in May. So I'm very, very excited about that. That's awesome. That's <laughs> Thank awesome. you. I love how, you know, you were talking about when you were a child and you had an interest in reading and, and you read at a very, very young age. And now you are an author for children's books. Now, as a matter of fact, um, I'm a homeschooling mom myself. Uh, yeah, my, well, really. my kids are older. My kids are older. They're both out of high school. And, and actually, my youngest is graduating from college. Um, That's wonderful. I wondered if you had any advice because I myself dealt with my, um, I, I just had two daughters. My daughter, Elaine, read around the age of, 
I would say around five, which I think is about normal, you know, yeah. somewhere around five. Now, her sister, there's an interesting story here, and I'm asking this you this question because you might have some tips for parents. Um, her sister was extremely intelligent, but I'm going to be very honest. She didn't read until she was 10. Now, I tried everything in the absolute book that you can think of, mm -hmm. except uh, when the psychologist and whatever wanted me to spend thousands of dollars on tests. Because I said, listen, my daughter is smart. I know that. Yes. yes. Well, she read at 10 years old. Now, um, as time went along, she went from kindergarten uh, grade level of reading until to sixth grade within two months when she got it. That's wonderful. That's insane amount of progress. That's awesome. Right. Now you would have thought that when she got into college that she would have been like a flunk out, you know, one point something average. She mm -hmm. is not only graduating with almost a 4.0, she's been invited to possibly be the valedictorian at her for her college graduation. That's wonderful. Congratulations. Right. Yeah. So I'm, I guess my point is that for those parents who are listening and thinking, you know, I wanted my child to read at this age. I wanted them to read at five years old or three years old, like you did. But, you know, we did hooked on phonics four times and she just didn't get it. She did uh -huh. not like books from a very young age. Uh, uh -huh. She was very artistic and liked um, art. She liked um, creating things and she was kind of like you, you said, with the messy room and um, and that type of thing. But I knew she was very intelligent. So even though I had these different doctors and people telling me, you need to do this, 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 I said, listen, I don't want to do anything because I know she's, quote, smart. I know she has it. Mm. So I guess in saying that, um, if, would you have any words of advice for any parents that are listening uh, who kids that are maybe not so interested in reading, but the, the parents, wa the, the, they want to engage their kids. Cause I know that was a thing for me. My older daughter loved reading. Uh, she was also honor society at college and everything else did great. That's awesome. um, she was more of at least an average to an above average student, but her sister kind of took after me as I was definitely a C student most of my life. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> so an A for most people would have been like a, a B or C would have been an A for uh, most people. I was more of that C student, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah. But um, I just didn't know if you had any words to say about that. I do. And, you know, from that perspective, I would say, don't give up hope. Please keep encouraging your child. Obviously, it's kind of difficult to get them to do something they may not want to do. Um, I was actually a tutor for four years at my school's uh, or my church's parish school of religion. And there were many kids who were having trouble even reading or following along. And for me, I, um, I tutored second grade mostly. And the way that I got them to engage was I got them to speak about something they were interested in. And most of the time it was a TV show or their action figures or Disney princesses or anything that they were really interested in. And I said, how would you like to write a story like that for your parents? And they would love to, because they want to be able to showcase, you know, this is what I'm good at. This is what I can do. I am creative and I am artistic, but I need help with this. And it could be with phonics. It could be with reading. I've worked with you know, kids who are dyslexic, kids who have ADHD, yeah. um, kids that struggle to focus or comprehend. Um, so I, I loved working with those kids because they are so fiercely intelligent and they have so much potential. And when I'm able to teach them through their eyes, like this is something you're interested in, like this is a transformer. Can you spell out transformer? They were able to catch on so much more quickly because they were engaged it wasn't like you know how in school they um they assign reading and it's like oh okay I guess I have to read this because the teacher is making me but if they're actually interested in the material themselves then they'll be willing to learn how to do x y and z to get the result that they want so that's how I approach it personally but every every child is different um every child has their own pace um definitely patience, definitely encouragement. Tell your kid, you know what? I know you're smart. You're doing a good job. You're going at your own pace and you will get this because I believe in you and you should believe in yourself. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think, well, Maria, you, you know, you touched on something really important um, is that encouragement 
is that lifting up of your kid and and really you know helping them along the this yeah. journey i think that's so important the other thing i think that you touched on too is that you know we all have strengths we all have strengths and it's just as important to point out the strengths. I think the transformer thing you were talking about, great idea, right? Like being able to say, you know what, this, this is something you're interested in. This is something that you like, you know, follow the passion. When, when you follow the passion first, mm -hmm. then what happens is the other weaknesses, uh, begin to strengthen up, right? Because, because you are feeding what is the, the core of that person, you know, each person is made with individual fingerprints, <laughs> individual, uh, you know, DNA, no human person is the same. And That's because, correct. and because of that, right? Because of that wonderful, uh, gift that we're given by God, we each have our own strength. We have, a, and, and I think that relates to the purpose that we are put on the planet, right? Like, like, like the reason why God put you out there is to do these things and do it really well. And you are out there, you know, inspiring young minds to live virtuously. And, and you're also helping yeah. people, you know, financially. And, and, and that is a strength, but it's, but it's also, you know, a purpose. And I, and I think if we can strengthen our families like that, the the weaknesses are going to just become uh, less weak when we when we feed the 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 core of the person. This is your interest. This is your passion. Follow it. You know. Um, so that's so, so that's so encouraging to hear. You're doing that. Thank you yeah. very much. I agree. I love your story and um, and my question about the parents that might be uh, somewhat frustrated if their kids quote aren't reading at a certain age I thought you'd be a good person to ask because you yourself uh, had a love of reading and so when you've written a wonderful book like you have and involved in being an author and also in financial consulting uh, you're a good person to consult with about those matters so I just want to thank you so much for sharing about that. Now, I noticed on your bio that you perform, performed at Carnegie Hall, the White House, and the Vatican. Uh, would you share a little bit about that? Oh my goodness, what a crazy time. That is absolutely true. I have performed at all three of those places with my former children's choir, and we did it all within the span of a year. So that was the crazy year. Um, Carnegie Hall, let me think. We went to Carnegie Hall in... June of I believe 2015 and it was insane when we got the call when we got the announcement oh we're going to perform at Carnegie Hall we're taking a select group with us um you know let's try out for it and so we did and we got through and it was so wild because you know you're looking out from Carnegie Hall from the stage at the thousands of seats all of which were filled and you know you're singing your heart out and it's like wow it's amazing how much you can connect with so many different people and the white house was december of that year it was at a, a holiday gathering and it was a funny story because we went into the white house and there was this area where risers were set up and we we got on stage and we started singing you know the repertoire and somebody came up to the pianist and to my choir director and whispered something in their ear and their eyes just lit up I'm like, what is going on? And so 15 minutes into our show, they pull us aside and they were like, okay, nobody freak out, but we might have a chance to actually give a private performance for the president and the first lady. And we were like, oh my goodness, is this really happening? We were freaking out. And so we were actually led into a separate room and um, we sang Carol of the Bells and we shook their hands and they were very, very tall. We all, we were all talking about how tall they were in real life. You know, you see them on TV and it's like, oh my goodness, they're so tall. And, you know, they were very nice. And um, Italy was summer of 2016. So that would have been five years ago this June. 
And that was insane. And I will never remember the order of the cities we went to, but we traveled so many places singing with different choirs um, from around the world. And uh, we went to uh, Milan and Lucca and Verona and Rome and Venice and all these great cities. And oh, if I had the chance to go back to Italy, I absolutely would. Singing at a mass is phenomenal, but it's also phenomenal being able to sing in cities where the floors and the ceilings are actually made of marble. So we could put on, you know, like random performances for these people, you know, like impromptu, like, oh, we'd be walking down the street and it's like, oh, let's do a warm up. Let's do it in public because the marble, you know, is fantastic for acoustics. And so we would just have an absolute blast. And St. Peter's Basilica is beautiful, absolutely huge. You could get lost in any one of those churches. Um, beautiful architecture, amazing food, wonderful people to sing with. Absolutely fantastic, all three of those trips. Well, uh, now we'll have to talk afterwards. Uh, thank you so much for sharing. But I do want to share with you as well that the foundation that I represent, Bill knows this too, uh, might be, might be uh, going on a pilgrimage to Rome next no year. Way. So guess <laughs> what? You are invited, you and all your friends. Oh my so God. I'll send you a link and another on another wonderful note. Uh, and I'm going to say this because some of our listeners might want to know this too, is that uh, Patchwork Heart Ministry and the St. Raymond Anatas Foundation uh, will be teaming up uh, now, it's not in stone yet, but it's almost there uh, for a possible pilgrimage. Bill, do you want to tell them about that? Oh, sure. Yeah, uh, we're we're looking at uh, about a year from now. Actually, uh, just be, we'd be home, I think, the, the, the day after uh, the, the, the pilgrimage next year. Uh, so, but just about a year away, um, going to the Holy Land. And it would be a sowing hope pilgrimage um, to also do the way of the cross um, with with our uh, with our contemplative stations of the cross that I authored so uh, we're, we're looking at doing that again as Anne said it's not quite in stone yet but um, but please stay tuned to our ministries because that's really you know and of course stay tuned to the podcast uh, because we because we will uh, probably have information for you. Uh, in in a little while about it. So uh, we're really excited about this possibility uh, to take people to the very steps where Jesus walked and where he, uh, you know, in, ministered and where he, you know, lived. Uh, we are we are so very excited about that. And I know, I know, Anne, uh, I'm excited to be able to uh, bring a Sowing Hope flavor to the pilgrimage, um, you know, and that is that is just awesome. So uh, I can't wait for that. Yes, and Maria, you're invited. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know have, if, if you've ever been there. Have you ever been there before, the Holy yes. Land? Yes, actually. Oh, you have? Oh. Well, actually, I've never taken a pilgrimage um, through Rome, but, you know, we when you're doing a tour with, like, a choir and you're doing, like, you know, they're going to all the hot spots and all of that, but I would so love to do it from that perspective because I would go so many places that we probably haven't even covered. I mean, that's a really big place. Um, I'm definitely in. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> oh, my that, family, it's like, let's all go to oh, Rome. Oh, <laughs> that's so good. So we got the two, though. You know, we have Rome, and then Bill was saying we're also Holy going Land. to the Jerusalem, Holy Land, yeah. which is Israel, you know, so... Um, you can keep in touch with us about that too. So that one's going to be in March, the one to the Holy Land in Israel. And then the, um, the other one, the one in the one for Rome, well, most likely I don't have complete like the label, the, the stamp of approval yet from the foundation I represent, but most likely be November of 2022. Mm -hmm. wow. So we will keep in touch about that. That's excellent. I've never been to the Holy Land, so I think that that would be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah it would be. Hope you can go and let your friends know that are listening. Keep in touch. Um, I'm going to give you the two websites for your friends that have their phones right there uh, to do get on the mailing list for both Patchwork Heart Ministry. That's patchworkheart.org and also nonatus.org, which is the St. Raymond Onatus Foundation. Uh, would be great. And I have my own website, which is andesantis.com, which you can also get on there too. 
So yep. and and all the information will be out on our podcast and everything, folks. Uh, you know, that's did, right. They, you know, it'll be out on the podcast. It'll be out on the. Uh, you'll probably hear ads for it, but you'll also uh, get a chance to uh, if you visit our websites as well. I and I know uh, just just for people who are uh, listening, the the company that we are working with uh, is a very very awesome Catholic um, re- re- reputable company called Select International Tours, uh, and they are um, a, a wonderful wonderful uh, organization that has been doing this for many 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 years, decades of experience. Uh, so. Uh, know that you will be getting a fantastic experience, uh, where, you know, on, on any of their trips. Uh, but but the, but this uh, Sewing Hope um, trip will be incredibly special to the Holy Land because uh, I know Ann and I uh, will. We still have a lot of details to work out, but we are uh, planning on doing some shows with our <laughs> while we're there live in these places. Uh, so uh, that's going to be um, super cool. And something that I'm looking forward to, you know, talking about faith and right, right there where Jesus walked. So, um, but anyway, uh, you know, for for those of you um, listening at home, we are talking with Maria Shepard, uh, and she is a uh, author, Catholic author, and uh, also a financial advisor. Or uh, is that the correct title, Maria? Financial advisor, financial consultant. I am a financial coach. Coach. So what makes it from a financial advisor is that. An advisor will like go through the numbers and fill out the tax forms, but I analyze the spending and the saving behaviors to see, oh, this person is doing this correctly, this person can do this a little better, and always provide hope. Providing hope is definitely at the heart of a coach. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and and, and I'd actually love for you to talk a little bit more about, uh, you know, I mean, obviously each person's financial, uh, you know, situations are different. Uh, but I would love for you to talk a little bit about it from from the faith perspective, from the Catholic perspective, and uh, you know maybe coaching and and helping people in general. Uh, what are some you know it is tax season too, right? Like this is tax season. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So you know so so maybe just talk with people. I mean you know the people might be getting some tax returns. People might be getting some stimulus stuff like that. You know maybe talk to us from the Catholic perspective about you know, how best to manage our, our money, you know, going forward as Catholics. Yeah. And we are all called to be stewards with the gifts that God gives us for sure. Um, What's wonderful about financial coaching from that perspective is that you get to teach people how it affects, how their spending and their saving habits affect them physically, spiritually, emotionally, and how it affects their relationship with God, because there is a giant element of trust especially in modern times, it's like some people don't know where their next um, paycheck is going to come. You know, their jobs are kind of on the fritz. I read a statistic somewhere, and I believe this was when I was actually doing the training, 70, either 75 or 79 percent of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. And that's another thing that I definitely wanted to touch on because I find it so incredibly hard to believe that we live in such a prosperous country and so many people are struggling still and i definitely want to help them through that and um from a catholic perspective it is a big act of trust because you know you build that relationship with each other um i have to trust that person to do their part and they have to trust me and what i'm doing and um there is that relationship as well and many people actually come to god when they analyze their finances, because it affects so many parts of their lives. It affects, you know, their relationships, you know, um, money issues is a big cause for divorce and people who work through their finances together, you know, have a better, you know, satisfaction rate and they stick together. And it's actually really wonderful what financial coaching can do for so many people, whether or not you are a practicing Catholic or not. I like to work with people of all faith. Um, you know, cause it builds the relationships, you know, with each other and with their money and it helps them give, it gives them a healthier out view of life. And that's really what I want to, um, to give to my clients for sure. Oh, it's really interesting. And I have to mention something you mentioned divorce and the foundation that I happen to represent, which is the St. Raymond and foundation for freedom, family, and faith. We have uh, two charisms to our outreach. One is to families who are in crisis. And of course, there's a whole bunch of different crises that people can have. 
Uh, mm -hmm. The second one is to divorced and separated Catholics. Mm -hmm. And for those who are considering divorce, right? So even before they get there. So mm -hmm. I love the fact of what you're doing because uh, we'll have to talk later on, right? Because um, some of the people that I uh, talk to and clients and such um, are people who are going through difficult financial situations. You know, when someone gets an unwanted divorce, and I say unwanted because, you know, as people of faith, people don't get married to get divorced, right? They don't get married because they want That's to. That's not the intent, right? Wind up getting divorced or an old, right? Mm -hmm. So um, they, they, they wish they, at the beginning, they wish to be a married person. Uh, but sometimes, unfortunately, because of sin and because of other factors that are out of their control, unfortunately, some of them do wind up getting divorced and an old. And then, some of the people have some financial issues after that fact too. You know, you got your single moms that are, you know, they have a couple kids and uh, you know, the, the ex-husband might not be all that involved in their lives. So, or the other way around too. Uh, that's just one example, but I'm just saying that you would be a perfect person to help someone like that. And, um, and for families, married couples, I'm sure you do great work for them. So what is it like for you working with these people so far that it's you're been, helping? It's been absolutely wonderful. The best word that I think that I can describe it is it's a transformative process. It is for me because I get to help people who are in all sorts of different situations. They have, you know, thousands and thousands in student loan debt or oh, they can't pay for childcare, or they spend, you know, thousands eating out per month, or, you know, they're getting a divorce, or they're getting an annulment, or somebody left all the debt behind to a partner they signed a loan on to. And it's been really, really fascinating for me to keep learning about, you know, how to solve those financial problems and stay afloat. But it's also been absolutely wonderful for them too, because I get to teach it to them. And, you know, they have that aha moment. They absolutely light up when they figure out, oh, not all hope is lost. I actually have a shot. And from my perspective, what I want to do as a financial coach is to take somebody who thinks they have absolutely no hope in the world, you know, not a chance of coming back. And I can look them in the eye and say, yes, absolutely. You have a chance at living the life that you dream. And one of the things that I get to do to people to get them to really engage is I have what's called a dream meeting. And I ask them, what do you dream of? You know, what do you want your future life to look like? I'm like certain, you know, your current circumstances don't matter in the dream meeting because you get to imagine anything. Oh, I have millions. Oh, you know, I get to retire and look after my grandkids and, you know, surprise them with trips to Disney or, um, you know, every dream is different. And it's so wonderful to see each person come alive when they talk about it, because I get to be the person that says, yes, I will help you reach those dreams and help you take a step closer. Wow. That that's wonderful. And I think especially that you are a younger person who has this goal because, you know, people who are in your age category, say, I'm going to say between like 18 and 35, something like that. Uh, when you make a decision on a younger, at a younger age that you care about this stuff, right? Yeah. Doesn't it make a difference? Because when you're younger, think about all the, the money that you could save if you really honestly thought about the little things, right? It, does it come down to that? Do you think, does it come down to small decisions every day? It can. And the example that I use for that is credit card debt, because consumer debt is one of the biggest problems I think facing our country, especially when, you know, you get a plastic card in the mail and, you know, they make you feel special. Oh, sign up for this. You know, you'll get airline rewards and you'll get X perks and Y perks and Z perks. And, you know, when you swipe a card, you know, you're not you're not counting the cash. You know, it's a different it's a different mindset. And even the little habits do accumulate. Um, but what's great about financial coaching is that I get to help them reverse that because if they can take baby steps to accumulate it, they can take baby steps to pay it off. And that's what I love doing. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, tell us, uh, if somebody's listening and they're thinking, wow, I, I really love what she's doing. 
Could you give maybe one or two small tips that people can do to get on a better track with their finances? Just one or two tips? Absolutely. Communication is definitely the first tip I would give, especially for married couples. There have been so many people I have worked with who it's like, okay, one spouse is in charge of the finances and the other one is completely in the dark. So when, you know, a sudden loan or a sudden, you know, delinquency comes to light, that's how the argument starts. But if you communicate and you're on the same page and you build that budget together and you make those decisions together, you can definitely get much more done because you're in a different mindset completely. Um, let's see, another tip I would give is definitely the little habits. They all add up. If you feel like, you know, you're lacking in one area, but you're spending too much in one area, definitely reevaluate kind of where your money is going. Um, if you are going out to eat, for instance, you know, if you're spending like $2,000 a month on that, but you can't pay the electricity bill, something's going wrong. And that's when you sit down and that's where it comes back to communication and, you know, getting really in touch with, okay, this is what needs to happen. And this is the lifestyle change that we need to make. And I've seen people who follow those tips succeed. They do well when they start paying attention and, you know, they don't spend on autopilot, I guess, as it were. Um, Every dollar, every action is intentional. And that's the best advice I think I can give. Awesome. Awesome stuff. And, uh, and, and thank you uh, so much for that. And, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit always makes those divine appointments. So people out there listening um, know that, um, you know, if, if that's resonating with you, the whole Holy Spirit might be telling you something. Uh, but the other thing I want to make sure that we uh, get in before uh, we, we close is just uh, for, for people to reach out to you and, you know, whether it's the books, whether it is, uh, you know, this financial coaching would you, would you just tell people, um, you know, the, 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 you know, how, how to get in touch with you, how to, um, you know, you know, if you are open to taking, uh, new, new people and stuff like that and how best, you know, they can, they can reach, they can reach you. I am always open to coaching new people every time. Absolutely. And people can reach me through my email, which is money with Maria at gmail.com. And then for my books, you can buy them either on Amazon or on the P- Perpetual Light, Light. Ah, I'm stuttering right now. Perpetual Light Publishing website. And um, if you have any like questions about my my author or or my authoring, my writing, um, my books uh, on my page, my Facebook page, it's Maria Schaffer Author Page, um, and I will be able to answer you know any questions you have there. But that's how you get to stay up to date with all of my new projects, all my current projects, everything going on in my writing world. I post there. Awesome, awesome stuff. This has been so much fun, Maria. I hope you come back, and I hope you continue to you know chat with us uh, because I think there, there's so much wisdom that we can learn from you. Uh, and and honestly, you know your your you know your writing work too. I mean that's that's such the the wonderful blend i just think there's a there's such a wonderful blend of gifts and talents that you have uh and you know from the creative aspect from the practical financial aspect i think you can you know you one of the things you said earlier is you know that dream session right like to be able to say this is yeah. that dream like i i i really think that you are um you know making that possible for others but you're also uh, doing it for for yourself, you're using your strengths in the right places, and so uh, that is that is such a beautiful thing to see, uh, and and so really appreciate you and and all the work you do. Uh, so yeah, we we really do hope you come back and <laughs> continue talking with us because this has been a lot of fun. It has, and on top of it, I have to say, I do hope you join us on the pilgrimage. I hope uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> the one and listen to this. If you go to these pilgrimages with us, we will interview you again. So <laughs> <laughs> any and I'm gonna say this, Bill, and Bill, I think you will agree with me, but any of our former guests who come on these pilgrimages can we will all do we'll do a big joint interview with all of us right i mean we'll do something together while we're there we have to bill oh exactly yeah and that's and that's the amazing thing i mean to be able to do uh this stuff in the places where you know the history 
of our faith, uh, you know, the, the roots of our faith grew is just awesome. Um, and so, yeah. and so, uh, you know, we really do encourage you folks, uh, just stay tuned to our ministry, stay tuned to our Facebook, Twitter, um, all that good stuff, because, uh, we will, we will be releasing information. Uh, but I also want to remind people like I did at the beginning of the program at the end here as well, uh, that there's just a few hours left, uh, to get your free copy of the Contemplative Stations of the Cross. Uh, and by the way, uh, there is a pilgrimage going on, uh, called The Lenten Pilgrimage with Steve Ray on, Pari, on Parousia Media. Uh, if you go to parousiamedia.com, uh, our wonderful friends there are putting on a 14-day pilgrimage journey through the Stations of the Cross, and Steve Ray is doing an incredible job each and every day going through a new Station of the Cross. It's going to be going through Easter, uh, and, and he's doing just an awesome job. So it's completely free. Check it out at parousiamedia.com, and then... The Stations of the Cross are free until midnight Pacific time, so uh, all, all of our friends from California can get in on the deal until midnight, um, and our friends on New York time, if you're a night owl and you're up at 2 a or 3 a.m. Uh, in Philadelphia or whatever, uh, you can also continue to get it till 3 a.m., but don't wait that long. Just click on um, you know, the link. It'll be in the show notes here on the podcast, but also uh, listen uh, go right to our website and uh, or to Amazon and search Contemplative Stations of the Cross. Uh, but yeah, so so thank you guys so much. This has been such a fun episode. And uh, again, Maria, hope that you come back and best of luck. And and people reach out to Maria. Uh, give that email one more time, Maria, for people who uh, who want to get in touch with you about the financial coaching. That is money with Maria at gmail dot com. And I look forward to hearing from everyone. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank Good job. You. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, folks, uh, thank you for tuning in tonight to Sewing Hope, and we really do appreciate uh, you listening and being with us. As always, stay tuned, keep beating to your Catholic hearts, and sowing hope into broken hearts. Until next time, I'm Bill Snyder for Anne DeSantis. Thanks for listening to this episode of Sewing Hope on Patchwork Heart Radio. For more information about this podcast and our ministries, visit our websites, patchworkheart.org and andesantis.com. You can also follow and interact with us on Twitter at PWH Ministry or andesantis2.